హార్టి వెల్కమ్ ఆల్ ఆఫ్ యూ గుడ్ ఆఫ్టర్నూన్ హార్టి వెల్కమ్ రెస్పెక్టెడ్ మేడం గారు డాక్టర్ కవిత్ అసిస్టెంట్ ప్రొఫెసర్ డిపార్ట్మెంట్ ఆఫ్ బాట్నీ గవర్నమెంట్ ఆర్బీవీఆర్ఆర్ ఉమెన్స్ కాలేజ్ హైదరాబాద్ అటానమస్ ప్లీజ్ వెల్కమ్ మేడం మేడం ఈస్ గోయింగ్ టు ఎక్స్ప్లెయిన్ టుడే ఇన్ బ్రయోఫైత యాంతో సిరాస్ సో మై డియర్ ఫ్రెండ్స్ ఇఫ్ యూ హ్యావ్ ఎనీ డౌట్ ప్లీజ్ ఆస్క్ అవర్ రెస్పెక్టెడ్ కవిత మేడం గారు so in the faculty exchange program uh, madam is going to explain the uh, bryophyta and the teredophyta of our fourth unit of uh, first semester so my dear friends if you have any uh, doubt during the class please ask our uh, respected kavita madam garu she is uh, clarify your doubts okay madam ji uh, please welcome and start your session okay sir thank you very much um good mo- good afternoon students uh, today we'll going to start good with uh, yeah good afternoon ma good afternoon everyone who are there in the meeting uh, today we are going to start with the another type study of uh, bryophytes which is called as anthocerous so by yesterday we have completed with the marchantia okay so today we'll start with the anthocerous just i'm start sharing the screen yeah so i think uh, i hope you can see the uh, slide over here yes madam yes okay sir right uh, so we are starting with the type study which is called as anthocerous so we'll go with the classification of that so as marchantia as it belongs to the bryophyta even anthocerous also belongs to the uh, bryophyta uh, which is under the subdivision which is called as anthocerotophyta and it belongs to the class anthocerotopsida but whereas marchantia it was belonging to the class called as hepaticopsida but whereas this um, anthocerous it belongs to the class called as anthocerotopsida and the order which is called as anthocerotales family anthocerotaceae and the genus anthocerous now uh so when we talk about so this is the structure or the thallus of anthocerous you can look into the structure even this uh thallus also appears just like marchantia but we can see uh, certain projecting filaments coming out of it so these are some filamentous structures which are coming out or uh, they are projecting out of the thallus like this so this is the sporophyte so you can see here this is the projecting long filamentous structures which are coming out of this thallus so here the thallus is also a gametophyte and this is the sporophyte so as these uh, this is sporophyte as it is coming out of the thallus it is projecting out of the thallus uh, commonly this uh, anthocerous is called as horn warts the bryophytes which are belonging to or the anthocerous commonly is referred to as horn warts whereas marchantia commonly called as marchantia ni common ga nina cheppan idi class lo meeku మార్కాన్షియన్ ఏమని పిలిచాం కామన్ గా గర్ల్స్ చెప్పండి ఇవి కాంపిటేటివ్ ఎగ్జామ్ క్వశ్చన్ చెప్పండి ఎంట్రన్స్ ఎగ్జామ్ కావాలి మేడం అడిగినప్పుడు చెప్పాలి ఇవి ఎంట్రన్స్ ఎగ్జామ్ క్వశ్చన్స్ కంపల్సరీ అడుగుతారు ఈ క్వశ్చన్స్ సరే మార్కాన్షియా ఆర్ కామన్లీ కాల్డ్ ఆస్ లివర్ వాట్స్ చెప్పాం కదా హెపాటిక్ ఆప్సిడా హెపాటికా అంటే లివర్ సో ద థాలస్ లుక్స్ లైక్ ఏ లివర్ లోబ్స్ లివర్ ఎలా ఉంటుంది అంటే మనం ఏమంటాం కాలేయం అంటారు కదా తెలుగులో ఇట్ అపియర్స్ ద థాలస్ లోబ్స్ అపియర్స్ జస్ట్ లైక్ ఏ లివర్ సో హెన్ దే కాల్డ్ ఆస్ లివర్ వాట్స్ బట్ వేర్ ఆస్ హియర్ దిస్ ఆంతోసిరాస్ due to the projecting ee sporophyte la baitiki project avutu unte 
సో దే అపియర్స్ జస్ట్ లైక్ ది హార్న్స్ ఆఫ్ ది యానిమల్స్ హార్న్స్ అంటే ఏంటి కొమ్ములు ఓకే యానిమల్స్ కి కొమ్ములు ఉంటాయి కదా కొన్ని యానిమల్స్ కి so they appears just like that so these uh, this is sporophyte which is coming out it appears like a horns so commonly the anthocyros is called as horn wart clear is ardham ayinda ee point right so now we will look into the habitat the occurrence the anthocyros where it is growing so again the same important point of bryophytes anthocyros also grows in moist soil even this is also a terrestrial okay just like marchantia marchantia is a terrestrial thallus even this is also a terrestrial growing on moist soil and they are present in the shady places the important characteristic feature of bryophyte or in the crevices of the rocks next the common species which occur in india of anthocyros are anthocyros erectus anthocyros himalayensis and anthocyros cambensis so these are the three commonly found species in indian regions of uh, western himalayas so this is regarding the habitat of where we can find the anthocyros or where they are commonly growing now when we talk about the structure of uh, the the that is the gametophyte or the thallus plant body how it is the vegetative part how is the thallus ante so even thallus anthocyros got a thallus plant body just like marchantia it does not have a true root stem or leaf next it is also a lobed thallus సో చెప్పాను కదా ఇక్కడ మీకు పిక్చర్ లో చూస్తే మీకు అర్థం అవుతుంది వెరీ ఈజీగా ఓకే యూ కెన్ సి దిస్ ఇస్ ద లోబ్స్ ఓకే ఇట్ ఈస్ ఎ లోబ్డ్ థాలస్ అండ్ ఇట్ ఈస్ ఇర్రెగ్యులర్ ఆర్ డైకోటమస్లీ బ్రాంచ్ మనకి మార్కాన్షియా ఐ క్లియర్ గా మనకి లోబ్స్ డైకోటమస్లీ బ్రాంచెడ్ గా కనపడతాయి దట్ ఈస్ వెరీ వెరీ పెక్యులర్ క్యారెక్టరిస్టిక్ ఫీచర్ ఆఫ్ మార్కాన్షియా డైకోటమస్లీ బ్రాంచ్డ్ థాలస్ okay whereas and lobed thallus but whereas in anthocyros adi dicotomous branch undochu undakochu it is not a compulsory but the thallus possesses irregular lobed ante regular ga kaakunda ante okka pedda ga okka chinna ga atla irregular ga untayi common ga kanapadadu anamata so it is referred to as irregular lobed thallus next inkoka point enti ante these lobes have wavy margin ante enti so suppose this is a first lobe so idi etla wavy ga untundi this is called as a wavy margin of the anthocyros lobe next this anthocyros it appears just like a small rosette rosette ante enti rose oka rose plant etla untadi manchiya ila anni petals arrange ayi it appears just like this so how i am drawing you can see here this is a anthocyros thallus and this is a sporophyte which is coming out of that and in the basal region you can see the presence of the uh, rhizoids are the mind so the thallus appears like a rosette or a rose like plant now and this is also a dorsi ventral not a dorsi ventral particularly to say dorsal side isobilateral anachu dorsal side is uh, equivalent that is dorsal side is equal to the ventral side so there is no such difference between dorsal and the ventral side but on the lower side of the thallus you can see the presence or the development of these rhizoids so we call them as these unicellular rhizoids by which it is attached to the substratum okay and and another important point here is on the lower side you can see the presence of the mucilaginous cavities now me ki the internal structure cheppeta pudu cheptan so this is a brief description of how the thallus appears so i repeat this once again even anthocyros thallus kuda thallus antamu a plant body ni thalloid plant body antamu it is having lobed thallus and which is irregular and the margins of the lobes are wavy in nature 
and uh, the entire thallus appears like a rosette it appears like a rosette manner and a rose flower laga kanapadutund anamata right and at the basal side you can see the development of the rhizoids okay now so inka important point ee anthos cirrus lo very 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 important point ikkada enti ante so i told you now on the ventral side that is on the lower side of the thallus you can see the mucilaginous cavities ante enti small openings anamata oka air chambers laga undi andulo mucilage oka jarudu padartham anedi untundi so that is called as mucilaginous cavities so e cavities lo we can see the presence of colonies of nostoc which is a blue green algae which is a blue green or a algae okay cyanophyceae member blue green algal member which is called as nostoc colonies so the presence of it is showing a symbiotic association antam am i clear so presence of these nostoc colonies uh, is a characteristic feature of anthocyros anthocyros lo ee nostoc colonies anetu untai vaati thallus lopala deeni valla em avutundi anthocyros ki atmospheric nitrogen ni supply chestayi enti ee nostoc anetu vi atmosphere lo unde itanti nitrogen gas ni in the form of ammonia it will convert it will convert and produce develop and it will give to the uh, this bryophyta anthocyros okay so that is important this is a very important point next uh, and on the dorsal side also we can see the presence of small opening like structures which are called as stomata so this is about the external that is the external morphology ante baita chudaniki thallus meeku ee vidhanga kanapadutundi and it is green in color so ikkada meeku a picture chuste it is green in color so ikkada lobes chudandi meeku clear ga kanapadutundi wavy lobes green in color rosette like thallus having idi soil kada base is a soil with the help of the rhizoids it is attached to the substratum and ee thallus paina meeku akkada akkada small pores laaga kanapadtayi which are called as the stomata and inside the thallus you can see the mucilaginous cavities consisting of the nostoc colonies am i clear so this is regarding the external morphology of the anthocyros now we'll go with the anatomy that is the internal structure so here meko first picture chuvistanu so this is the ts transverse section of the anthocyros thallus so when a marcantia anthocyros thallus lo we have showed you a clear picture of dorsi ventral thallus and the dorsal side ventral side rendu different ga undi and at the same time below the epidermal below the upper epidermis you have seen the presence of photosynthetic region and the chloroplast lo nai dani kinda storage region undi అటువంటి డిఫరెన్సియేషన్ ఏమి కనపడదు మొత్తం మిసోఫిల్ టిష్యూ అంటాం ఇదంతా కూడా ఒకే రకమైన టిష్యూ దెర్ ఇస్ నో డిఫరెన్సియేషన్ హియర్ బట్ వీ కెన్ సీ ద ప్రెజెన్స్ ఆఫ్ అప్పర్ ఎపిడోమిస్ అండ్ ద లోవర్ ఎపిడోమల్ అయ్యర్ ఓకే అండ్ బిలో దట్ ఎపిడ అప్పర్ అండ్ ది లోవర్ ఎపిడోమిస్ దెర్ దట్ ఇస్ అ కంప్లీట్ పారెంట్ హైమాటస్ టిష్యూ హియర్ వేర్ ద సెల్స్ ఆర్ వెరీ క్లోజ్లీ ప్యాక్ మొత్తం కూడా parent hematous tissue cells are very closely packed without any intercellular spaces and all the uh, excuse me excuse me and all the cells shows the presence of chloroplast so hence the thallus appears green in color and in between this uh, parent hematous tissue you can see this is a chambers or the cavities just now i told you which are called as a mucilaginous cavities cavities ante enti empty space anamata ee parenchymatous tissue madhila ila empty space cavities anetivi erpadtayi 
Indulo, it is completely filled with mucilage. Mucilage and a jar of padarga. Okay, liquid. Okay, mucilage in a cavity and tamandakan. Now, in some of the cavities, you can see here near to the lower epidermis, you can see here this is our mucilaginous cavity which is enclosing under the mucilaginous cavities locally. You can see the colonies of nostoc. We nostoc colonies done local. That is showing the symbiotic association under rondo. Sahaji and Jason and Mata that we call it as symbiotic association. Okay, these are the nostoc colonies, which is helping in supplying the food material. That is not only the food, but uh, not the foods, uh, the atmospheric nitrogen to the anthocyros thallus. And on the lower side, you can see the presence of the unicellular rhizoids, which are of smooth type. So the same thing here. The thallus is going to have uniform tissue of parenchymatous cells, upper epidermis and lower epidermis on both the sides. And the parenchymatous cells consist of chloroplast. As a result, the complete thallus appears uh, very green in color. And uh, the cells of the lower epidermis gives rise to smooth unicellular rhizoids. Am I clear? This is a Simple, very simple internal structure of the anthocyros thallus as compared to Marcantia. Habitat, external morphology, and the anatomy of the anthocyros thallus. Is it clear? Girls, is it clear or not? Respond to Alamma. I will respond later, sir. Sir, okay. Now, next we will continue with the uh, how this thallus is going to be growing. Growth of the thallus. And, right. So, general growth, it is in anthocyros, it is generally occurred by a single epical cell. And a plant, and a lobes, and a lobes margins low, we can see the presence of some epical cells or the points and down. So these epical cells, they will divide and help in the growth of the thallus. And the uh, thallus and the expand our ki, e epical cells and we chala help just that. Next. Next, we'll go with the reproduction point of view. Now, so even uh, anthocyros also it reproduces by vegetative reproduction at the same time sexual, uh, asexual and the sexual reproduction. Now, so when you talk about the vegetative reproduction, just like Marcantia, it is either by fragmentation, which is carried out by the death and decay of the thallus. And uh, in certain uh, thallus, you can see the development of tubers. Tubers and a &T. Tubers are the structures which are the outgrowths on Tamatini. Okay. So, which store the food material. So, those tubers, when they detach from the plant body, and the plant body into separate, they will germinate and uh, develop into thallus again. Next, in some of these species, even you can see the development of gemme also, just like in Marcantia. And another important point is with the epices, that is the epical cell with the growing epical epices or the growing tips, when they also detach from the plant, they give rise to a new plant. So this is how, this is anthocyros thallus, you can see, this is a sporophyte. So it is the irregular lobed thallus. So death and decay and indeed, when they are uh, when this is becoming old and uh, it when going to the decay stage and uh, some of the parts may give rise to new plant body. So you could choose uh, these are the tubers. So these are the tubers which are uh, developed on the thallus. Okay, so you can see they are having a protective layer which you don't keep that is the 
uh, the tuber, which is surrounded by these uh, projections or a protective layer, which helps in giving protection to the tuber. Okay, these are the external outgrowths on them, which is stored with more amount of food material. Next, gamete. Some of the species, just now I told you, like uh, uh, anthocyros gland. And it look on a part of the game. Only in some species, like anthocyros glandulosus or formaceae or fusiformis, it when the uh, species low, the uh, game cups are developed on the thallus, that is on the dorsal surface of the thallus. And from these game cups, these game, which are the uh, vegetative bodies, helping in. Pro germinating and producing a new thallus. Next, by persistent growing epicels, that is the epical parts of the uh, many, uh, much of the thallus will develop into a new plant. So that is regarding the asexual reproduction, like uh, vegetal reproduction and by gemme and tubers, vegetative reproduction and by the fragmentation of the death and decay of the matter. Now, next we are going for the sexual reproduction. So you can see very beautiful the thalases. This is the anthocyros thallus. Is the green color structure me This is the anthocyros thallus. And at the time of sexual reproduction, you can see here this is the sporophyte, which is coming out of the gametophytic tissue. So this is a gametophytic tissue from this is sporophyte and it is emerge. So that's why they are called as the horn watch. Now, so vegetative reproduction, I think, you know, right. So when you talk about the sexual reproduction, anthocyros is a gametophytic plant. And anti, what is this gametophyte? So gametophyte means gametophyte and in the Bryophyta plants are called as gametophytes. Anam. What does it mean? In the plant, thallus ni gametophyte and no. Sir, so, no voice also no? Am I audible? Yes, you are audible, madam. Clearly audible. Okay. Okay, okay. Right. Uh, gametophyte and endocontinuum. Endocontinuum, thallus, spina, you can see the development of sexual organs in Japan. Antheridia and the archegonia. They are the sexual organs which are directly attached to the plant. And the plant body ni gametophyte and even anthocyros is also a gametophytic thallus. But in Margantia, I told you that Margantia is a dioecious plant. And a male plant to female plant to separate. Because anthocyros, we come across monoecious as well as dioecious species. And a species dioecious. And a male plant to female plant to separate. Because some species, lo, Male and female sexual organs, they develop on the same plant, same thallus. So that condition is called as monoecious. Okay, right. Next, important. So Mark and Chialo, we see the sexual organs are projected out of the gametophyte. And the thallus bite kochi, maniki sexual organs and we convert the bite ki. But whereas in anthocyros, they are deeply embedded in the thallus. And the manaki anthridia kani archegonia kani bite ki kana padadu. Avi tissue lopal ki develop out thai. So that is the main difference lying here in uh, development of sexual organs between anthri, between Marcantia and the anthocyros. Itla mir comparative ga chadute mi chala easy subject. Okay. So in Marcantia lo, miku. Anthridia emo, anthridia four pen develop out thai, archegonia emo, archegonia four, stock pen develop out thai. But whereas in anthocyros, there is no structures like that. They are directly 
embedded that is they are present inside the thallus so ikkada meek chuste kanapadutundi manam ts manam thallus yokka ts kanaka teesukunte ee tissue lopala you can see this is called as an antheridial cavity oka chamber or dini antheridial chamber ani kuda antam idi tissue lopala develop avutundi and at the time of sexual reproduction in this antheridial cavity we can see the presence of the male sexual organ which is called as antheridium am i clear so when you see about the antheridia so they occur endogenously on dorsal surface endo endogenously ante inside the tissue okay and they are developed on dorsal surface ante on the upper surface of the thallus and they are present in a closed cavity which is called as the antheridial cavity or the antheridial chamber am i clear so when we talk about the antheridia structure antheridia is a club shaped uh, uh, it is a club shaped structure okay club shaped ante enti inda cheppam kada globular it will be a club shaped structure like this and a stalk right so we uh, discuss now how is the antheridia structure here so the antheridia they are present on the upper surface of the thallus in small cavities and generally remember anthocerosclero each antheridial chamber consists of only two antheridia they develop only two sometimes in some species it may go up to four also but generally in the antheridial cavity of the anthocerus we see the development of only two antheridia okay this is also an another important question from the exam point of view right now this antheridial cavity they are all come uh, they are covered by a double layer of cells now each antheridium when we talk about the structure of an antheridium each antheridium having a multicellular small stalk and uh, a body which is called as a globose body and these uh, antheridia also surrounded by a single layer of jacket layer so which is a characteristic feature of a bryophyte and inside the antheridia we can see a mass of androcyte mother cells or we are also calling them as uh, anthrozoid mother cells which are giving rise to the male gametes which are called as anthrozoids and which are also motile by flagellate okay they are also just like american anthrozoids ivi kuda they are by flagellate they consist of two flagella they can move from they are motile they can move from antheridia to the archegonia next the androgonial cells they produce a mass of androcytes or the anthrozoid mother cells which will undergo reduction division and produce anthrozoites now the antheridial wall or the antheridial chamber it will uh, rupture by which all the anthrozoites are released into the surrounding environment so you can see here this is uh, a, uh, the cell of the thallus which is called as the primary antheridial cell it will divide and produce the two antheridia you can see here these are the two antheridia and this is antheridial cavity which is having a small stalk and this is a jacket layer of cells internally this is completely the androcyte mother cells and uh, these androcyte mother cells will divide and produce anthrozoites by flagellated anthrozoites so it will be clear ga chuduch these this is one antheridium and this is another antheridium which is a stalk and is anta kuda antheridial chamber surrounded by a layer of cells and ikkada inkoka important point enti ante the anthrozoites are spindle shape and biselated ante biflagellated anamata spindle shape ante they are long and elongated idi chaala chaala important point 
the anthrozoids of anthocyros are spindle shaped and they consist of two flagella at the anterior end so and these are the two flagella at the tip of the anthrozoid they consist of these two flagella so spindle shaped anthrozoids is a characteristic feature of anthocyros this is an important point next to these anthrozoids they swim in the water and uh, with the help of the flagella they reach the archegonia so that is regarding the male reproductive organ which is called as antheridia in case of anthocyros now when we talk about the archegonia these archegonia they are developed uh, not in the uh, just like uh, antheridia they are developed only at the growing points of the thallus and they are also just embedded in the tissue so i could make sure so at the time of reproduction one of the epical cell of the thallus will modify or it will transform into the archegonial initial so this archegonial initial will undergo development and uh, transform itself into a flask shaped uh, structure which is called as the archegonia so when we talk regarding the archegonia structure the archegonia are having a globose venter the base which is called as a globose venter and a small neck it is not the neck is not as long as like marcantia it is having only a small neck with only four neck canal cells and the venter consists of a venter canal cell and the female gamete which is called as the egg cell okay and at the top of this uh, neck region you can see the presence of two or three cover cells okay this is a venter this is a egg cell this is a ventral canal cell and this is a short neck having the neck canal cells and these two are the cover cells so this forms a structure of the uh, archegonia of the anthocyros now so what is happening now the anthrozoids when they are released from the antheridia they swim in the water and they get attracted towards the mucilage which is secreted from the archegonium neck region and they will get attracted to that and they will reach the neck of the archegonia swim into the venter and it is going to fuse with the to complete the fertilization so fertilization is completed here when the anthrozoid is fusing with the egg and that results in the formation of a zygote so this zygote which will be present inside the venter and that will develop into the next generation which is called as the sporophyte <coughs> so i'll stop at this particular point and regarding the sporophyte structure i'll continue in my next class so just i'm stop sharing here my incremental doubts unte please you can so we have completed up to the sexual reproduction that is a gametophyte structure so incremental doubts unte please in 3 minutes unde inga you can ask me the doubts okay ma if you have any doubt please ask your respected madam my dear friends okay any doubt regarding of today's class you are at class ke sambandhi evar kana doubt unda amma em ledhu kada okay madam ji thank you no doubt sir sir okay okay madam right. okay madam thank you very much uh, to yeah. uh, 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 same time madam yes sir tomorrow same time okay, uh, thank, thank you, you girls we'll see you tomorrow bye okay madam okay madam thank you thank, thank you ma'am ma